It's time for evolution. We welcome you to the Aurora Art family. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I create my characters. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you're free to do whatever you want. You can do anything. So nothing is limited. So expand yourself to the infinite potentials of your creativity. So one tip I have in mind is to build a story world. And so this can include, uh, your story world can include different cultures of that fantasy world and you may want to build your own designs based on that culture background so for example my comic Oscar or Oscar it takes place in the Beastman kingdom and within the kingdom it has uh, I took inspirations from Venice Italy co culture and uh, like I, I I take inspirations from you know the you know the mask that people wear you know some plague masks etc and although the culture is somewhat based on it, it's still a fantasy culture, so I have my own twist into it to make it its own thing, the, the Beastman Kingdom. And so if your fantasy world has a culture that's inspired by something or it's the culture itself, you may want to take some inspirations from that. So for example, me, since it's, uh, I'm taking inspirations from Venice, Italy, I'm taking some designs from Venetians, you know, so that's how I implement it for my characters, you know, because I'm m matching it with the, the culture and whatnot. And so th there's a gu there's a guideline, so you don't have to like always follow it. So you can make your character that lives in the culture not dress as the masses, you know. It can it could be probably because of his personality. He's he's he's, he's like a rebel. He doesn't want to dress like everybody else or something like that, you know. And so that leads to the second tip. So the second tip is designing your characters by understanding them, you know. Well, like once you understand your characters, you can easily design them. So let's say that you're like understanding your characters. It implements, you know, personality, background, religious beliefs, or the power the character has. So, for example, my own character, Magic Man. Uh, Magic Man is his code name for the, the drug gang that he works for, Bright Time. So, he wears a magician hat or a top hat just to have people... So, I, I make them, I make um, Magic Man wear this uh, magician hat because, you know, his name is Magic Man. It, it, it gives, like, visual implications of his code name Magic Man to strengthen the idea of his name and then there's the mass the plague mass which is part of his you know his history so somewhat and uh, it has a <clears throat> cultural influence that's tied to Venice it so Magic Man's personality is highly goofy and he wears no pants and he's meant to look crazy to fool the masses into thinking he isn't such a huge threat or when you know people start to snitch on Magic Man or you know tattletale on who Magic Man is to the higher ups they won't actually believe the person's story because of how ridiculous it sounds so that's also a plan of Magic Man's agenda as to how he's dressed and you can see how I'm blending uh, cultural influences and personality with agenda, etc. for this character, Magic Man. And it doesn't always have to be like that. You can base the design purely on a character's personality, just solely a personality or like, a, you know, an interest, you know, or, you know, you're free to do whatever you want. And maybe you want to design a character to uh, showcase how poor the government is so you may want to have a character wear really rugged clothes and that can be a side character or so or just a character you see in the background just to have people just to ha convey that there's something going on you know they're not living a really well wealthy life and so the third tip to understanding to creating a character is understanding color color theory and you know chakra systems which can help so chakra system the root chakra is colored red and it's responsible for passion and energy and many characters of red tend to be wild and hot-headed and you know it, red is just an attention grabbing color in general and that also ties back into color theory and 
bright red is an attention grabbing color it's just it's just like a, it's just a really uh it's just really a attention grabbing and that's why many social medias use the color red like youtube you can use this subscribe button to get attention the, the red layout they put the red layouts on social media on your notifications so that you can get the impulse to click on it this is why i changed my twitter from a red layout to something more that doesn't cause me to like actually react on anything or so so yeah that's how it is for color red and uh the color purple you know ajna chakra i have it uh based on one of my characters the ajna chakra is colored purple and that's related to like a higher up spiritual realms is the third eye chakra and uh with that color purple it can help to convey what this person is like so at the same time i have this person wearing a pajama like uh pants because it also ties into his uh, ability f with dreams and that also ties into uh, to the uh, Ajna Chakra as well. And sometimes you don't have to get inspirations from the chakra systems. Like for example, if your character has ice powers, when you think of ice, what do you think about? You usually think of light blue or or so. And you can also think in terms of a, a Pokemon types, you know, the, the color, the, the color red is related to fire. The, the color blue is related to water. The, the, the light, the light blue is related to ice. So it'll be a little bit odd if you have the fire type within um, an, uh, an ice, like the color layout of ice, light blue but having it as a fire, if, if that makes sense. So it'll, it'll look a little weird, but you know, you can do whatever you're, you're, um, you're free to do whatever you want. You know, it, it, it could be a creative way that ties into the story that makes you design a character that has uh, fire powers, but he's dressed in all, in all, uh, you know, sky blue or light blue. You know, it's up to you. You're not, you're not limited to anything. So don't think that you're free to do whatever you want. These are just guidelines. And one more extra bonus tip. And so this bonus tip is regarding designing a team, a, a group of characters. So if you have a group of superheroes or a group of antagonists that share the same, uh, that, share, that share the same goals, etc., you may want them to have uh, similar designs, but at the same time different. So let me explain. So you want to have something that connects these these this team, this group of people together. So maybe a logo that they all wear, or for my for my case, bright ton, the bright ton elite members, they're all wearing masks, some kind of mask. And except for the 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 person in the middle, I mean he has a shaman nin, ninzu, ninzu, he has a, a cracked mask on. So it's it's related to something in the story and uh, as to why he still wears that mask, but it's cracked. But you can see that the connections that all the all these characters have is this that they wear masks. There's also another connection to these characters. And you may want to put more than one connection. So the no another connection is the colors that I use. So you'll be seeing the same repeating colors like the colored gold, the color gold is on every every each and each and every one of them just the color gold itself and as you can see in the design there are two people wearing the bright time logos and that's the person wearing the blue and the person wearing the red none of none of them are wearing the any bright time logos so this can mean something significant or you know you can like have something that separates uh uh members inside of a team comparing it to like everyone else so to explain shaman ninazu's design i took some uh, inspiration from various different things that i saw so Nin Nin shaman ninazu is the antagonist that's located in the center of the bright time elite portrait and uh the, the image that you see here is something I saw from Aroni Kenshin 
and from this this is a this this is just a, a shaman design and what i took from it is just how the way uh the clothing is is you know stretched out like that and the the scarf located around the the person's uh, neck and that's pretty common among uh, some you know religious or you know shamanistic uh, cultures or so i mean sometimes you'll see this uh, the scarf hanging around the person so i took that inspiration from this design that i saw just watching anime i just uh, screen screenshotted and then there was another one uh there was an inspiration for Hugo from Street Fighter because I enjoyed his the way his hair was just so so wavy, you know. And so I implemented that for Shaman Nin Ninazu because I wanted him to have wavy hair as well. And so you can, you know, this is how you pretty much can design a character. You can look for different types of hairstyles that you enjoy, you know. And you can like mix match things and once you're mixing and matching things you can eventually just make something that's unique taking inspiration from various different venues and that will be the video thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed leave a like and comment and yeah there's a bell button right next to the subscription so don't forget to click that if you enjoyed it, or if you want to follow with the new updates on the channel and yeah, that'll be the bit. Peace out.